Hi guys, today we're going to talk about radians and the unit circle. So I know the notes look kind of weird. We've got kind of like this half page is the first page and then the second page is a full landscape page. Um, but keep in mind that these were originally created so that we could do them on paper. So we kind of fold them like a booklet. So up until now, radians really hasn't appeared much in the geometry course with the exception of when we're doing trigonometry. And when we're doing trigonometry and we're trying to um, get values using sine and cosine and tangent, and we use Desmos, or we use the graphing calculator, the default for those systems is measuring in radians. And so what we've had to do up until now is we've had to take radians, and we'd have to switch it into degree mode. Because up until now, we've been using degrees. Now, in the future, whenever you get into some of your upper level classes, if you happen to take pre-cal and calculus, um, those classes really focus more on using radians. But up until now, we've been using degrees. So we're kind of shifting, um, and today we're just kind of exposing everybody to the idea of radians and what they are. So all the stuff that's on the front page, we are going to come back to it. But I want you to go down to that second page. And I've got some kind of crazy stuff going on here on the bottom. Ignore that. That's going to be used in a moment. So the first thing that I want to point out is the circle right here. The circle right here is actually quite large, and I have this pink piece just like that. And that pink piece represents the what of the circle? Represents the radius. This is where we're going to get the word radians from. So you might have noticed that radius and radians kind of look and sound similar. So this radius right here has a certain measurement. And what I'm going to do, what I have off to the side in all of those different colors, is I have the length of the radius bent so that it will lay flat on the circle. And so what I'm going to do is move each of these pieces so that it can lay on the circle. And I want you to see how many times, because that's our first question, how many times does the radius of the circle go around the circle? So how many times does it go around the circle? So let's start picking up the pieces. I'm going to take this green one. There we go. Keep moving. Purple. This is three times. And this is four times, so this is the length of the fourth radius that fits. Oops. This light turquoise one down here, that's five times. This red one makes six times, and then we have this extra little bit, right? It's not quite a radius, but it is at least a little bit extra. So I'm going to move this screen up a little bit because everything doesn't quite fit inside my record window. Number one says, how many times does the radius of the circle go around the circle? Well, it went around one, two, three, four, five down here, six, and a little. So it went around a little more than six times. So today, I mean, we're kind of just estimating here. If you were in class, we might do something a little bit different. But this little bit right here, if I were to try and characterize how much of a true radius that little bit is, well, it kind of looks like one of them would fit there, and one of them might fit there, and one of them might fit there. So it kind of looks like that little bit is about a third of a radius. So I'm going to estimate that this is about 6.3 radii. 6.3 radii. Now it's important to know that a unit circle is a circle with a radius of one unit. So that's what we have here, this radius that's in pink that you see, that's our one unit. So 
So what I'm interested in right now is what is the exact circumference of the unit circle? Well, let's talk about circumference. The formula for the circumference of the circle is 2 times pi times the radius. Well, what did we just talk about the radius's value is? 2 times pi times what is the radius? Well, in a unit circle, the radius is one unit. So whenever you find the circumference, 2 times pi times 1 is exactly 2 pi units. This is the circumference, the exact circumference of the circle that you see, the exact circumference of the unit circle. So let's talk about what 2 pi is. So the estimation for pi, the decimal approximation that so many people use is 3.14. And so if I multiply 2 times 3.14, then I end up with 6.2, right? Which is awfully close to what we got a moment ago. So number three says, what is the approximate circumference of our unit circle? Well, we ended up getting... ...6.3 radii, or radians. So the approximate circumference of our circle was 6.3 units, and the length of the semicircle, if I know that all the way around my approximation is 6.3 units, well, a semicircle is what distance around the circle? It's half. So half the distance around the circle, if I took 6.3 and I divided by 2, I would get about 3.15, right, units. That's about the length, sorry about that, that's about the length of a semicircle. So how does our answer in number three compare to our answer in number two? Well, it's awfully close. 6.3 is close to 6.28, so it's close. What could account for the difference? Well, the fact that we're approximating this distance and the fact that we're not really using precise measurement techniques, um, basically human error. and non-precise measurement. So human error and non-precise measurement is kind of creating this possible um, difference that you see. Now I'd like to take that information and kind of insert it into our unit circle. Um, and one thing that we need to talk about before is if I were going to talk about angles in a circle. If I were talking about angles in a circle, I would assume that the center of my circle is the vertex, and part of my angle, one side of the angle, is laying along the x-axis in the positive direction, so going to the right. And I would kind of have this angle opening up so that I would have, you know, 30 degrees here, here's the other side of my angle, 60 degrees here from down here all the way up to the 60 degree line, 90 degrees right here, so we could put a nice little right angle box right there to create that 90 degree angle. And so I just want to make sure that you understand when we refer to angles, we're referring to angles that have a vertex at the center, and one of the sides of the angle lies along the x-axis, and it kind of opens up as it goes around the circle until it goes all the way around. Um, and in that direction, that's why whenever we do rotations, we end up having rotations that go in a counterclockwise manner because that's the manner that you rotate around the unit circle. So if our circumference is exactly 2 pi units, well that means that I start out here at 0. If I go all the way around the entire circle, I've gone around the entire circle 2 pi radians. Well what about if I only go around half? If I only go around a semicircle, well, what would half of that circumference be? Half of 2 pi would be pi. So if I open up a circle 180 degrees and I make a semicircle, that's pi. So that's pi radians. What about half of that? Halfway between 0 and 180 is 90 degrees. So halfway between 0 and pi would be pi halves, pi over 2. So kind of each 90 degree wedge that we have here is pi halves. So I go from 0 to pi halves to pi 
to pi plus another half. So we have down here three pi halves and then all the way up to 2 pi again. So all the way around is 2 pi units in radians. So this unit is in radians. So the reason that radians exist is whenever you get into upper level math classes, it becomes much more easier to talk about things in terms of radians than it is to talk about them in terms of degrees. And when you're first starting to learn about angles, degrees is definitely easier to understand. So in geometry, we're going to try and convert things from radians to degrees and then vice versa, from degrees to radians. So that's our goal today is to be able to convert. So I'm going to go back to the top. I'm going to fill in some information about radians and the unit circle. So a radian measure of an angle is the ratio of the length of an arc intercepted by a central angle and the radius of the circle. Exactly how many radians are in a half circle? Well, if you think back to our unit circle, a semicircle, only halfway around, only went to pi. So exactly how many radians are in a half circle? Well, there would be pi radians in a half circle. Exactly how many degrees are in that half circle? That's something that you're familiar with already. 180 degrees is the measure of a semicircle. So if I wanted to convert from degrees to radians, like I had some amount of degrees, and I multiply it by something, and I end up with radians. Well, in order to do that, I would need to cancel out my degrees. So you would multiply by the number of radians over the number of degrees. And so I might use pi as my radians and 180 over my degrees. And that's radians over degrees. So I would multiply my degrees by pi over 180 and I would end up with my radian amount. Now conversely if I wanted to convert from radians to degrees, so I'm going from radians to degrees, I would multiply by 180 over pi, that's degrees over radians. and that would give me my degrees. So we're going to ignore these parts on the bottom, but the last thing that we have is to actually practice, to convert each degree measure into a radian measure and give the quadrant. Now before we give the quadrant, remember there are quadrants, there are four of them. So we have quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four, keeping in mind that you start here and you rotate this way. And that's why the quadrants are organized in the way they are. Quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four, going from zero degrees to 90 degrees to 180 degrees to 270 degrees. And then the radians would be going from zero to pi over 2 to pi, to 3 pi over 2, and then to 2 pi finally, which is back at 0. So if I wanted to convert each degree measure to radians, that means that I'm converting using pi over 180. So I'm going to multiply by pi over 180. Well, I can cancel out my zeros and 12 and 18 are both divisible by 6. So this gives me 2 pi over 3 radians. So I'm just converting. Next one, same thing. I want to create a fraction here. I want to multiply by pi over 180. So when I do that, I can divide 245 by 5. I can get 49. I can divide 180 by 5 and get 36. Both of those are divisible by, let's see, 
49 is divisible by 7. 36 is not divisible by 7, so this would be 49 pi over 36 radians. And then 20, if I created a fraction here, multiplied by pi over 180, canceled out my zeros. Both 2 and 18 are divisible by 1, or sorry, by 2. So this would be pi over 9 radians. If I wanted to convert each radian measure to a degree measure, don't worry about graphing these. We don't need to graph them right now. But if I wanted to convert each radian measure to a degree measure, I would multiply by 180 over pi. So if I multiply by 180 over pi, the pi's will cancel. 180 divided by 4 is 45. 4 divided by 4 is 1. So we would have 3 times 45, which is 135, measured in degrees. Same idea for the next one. I want to convert radians to degrees, so I multiply by 180 over pi. The pi's will cancel. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 180 divided by 4 is 45. And 11 times 45 is 495. So we're definitely going all the way around a circle and then some. And then finally, if you have negative pi over 3 and I multiply by 180 over pi so that I can convert to degrees, the pi's will cancel. 180 divided by 3 is 60. But I do have this negative right here, so that means I'm going negative 60 degrees. That negative 60 degrees, remember when you rotate a negative amount, means you're going in the clockwise direction. So if you go in the clockwise direction 60 degrees, that's the same thing as rotating 300 degrees in the counterclockwise direction. So this is just kind of an example of how to convert radians to degrees and vice versa and an introduction to the radians and the unit circle.